Hello and welcome to another episode of Not Too Deep. I'm your host, Grace Helvig. I'm overjoyed for you to listen or watch this episode this week. We have the one and only Connor Franta with me, who, you know, YouTube extraordinaire, uh, artist extraordinaire, runner extraordinaire, uh, my old buddy. He's got a new book out called House Fires, which is his third book. It's a collection of short stories, poetry, photography, all these beautiful artistic endeavors that he's grown into. We talk about the idea of growing and evolving as an artist, especially in the digital space, which is difficult to do. It makes many people uncomfortable. Lots of you okay comments. We talk about the TikTok of it all. We talk about uh, his mother listening to his audiobook for the first time, among many, many other things. Connor is just such a joy to listen to. He's got such wise advice and thoughts about the world, um, especially one coming from a beautiful artistic soul can tell that also has a great sense of humor so please enjoy this episode of not too deep with connor franta connor 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 um how many miles did you run today ah <laughs> got me got him uh i got eight in the bank did Ms. you Ma'am. really yeah, yeah. Okay, well, what's your, uh, is that an everyday thing? Are you running every day for at least a minimum of a certain amount? I am. Well, not a not a minimum. I feel like it's one of those things where like most people who have like a gym routine are like, yeah, mm-hmm. I'll go for 30 minutes. So for sure. me, it's like, I'll go for at least like five miles because that's equivalent to what is that close to 30 minutes. But honestly, as soon as I get going, it's kind of hard to stop in a weird way. Mm. It's like you really get into that rhythm and I'm like, well, what if I just add on a mile? What if I just add on two miles? I just kind of keep going. Well, because I wonder, I have many thoughts and I have- If I'm or- mentally ill? No, no, no. You're <laughs> mentally very healthy. And I think you're mentally um, <laughs> handling all of the chaos of thoughts that we all have constantly. <laughs> I'm saying I have so many questions, but they're not consolidated correctly enough uh, to make this flow, it's going to be chaos. So what I wonder, because one, I've noticed, obviously, over the last couple of years that you have picked up a microphone in many different ways. I love this little handheld microphone, Connor, in TikTok, in YouTube, in your now soft lunch podcast. Yes, I was recording an episode before this. I just I like, yeah, I like the long form Oh, tell me about that because you've come from, we've all come from this like hyper edited, hyper like let's curate uh, an essence of ourselves. And now you're kind of unediting yourself in a way. Uh, Where did that come from and how does that feel for you? I think it's this yearning to be more who I actually am and Mm -hmm. who I actually feel like I am off camera. And it's this, it's striving to, Because I mean, as you know, I feel like as anybody knows nowadays that like as soon as you turn on the camera, you just start like dancing. You start (laughs) dancing or 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 putting question marks around your head or or smiling awkwardly. You just like don't know how to act in front of a camera naturally. Mm -hmm. So I'm it's this it's me striving to be a little bit closer to who I think I actually am in some Mm. way. And it's still even, you know, an unedited podcast. I still feel find myself going like that, 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 that. And well, it's interesting because I, I am we're going to talk about your newest book and all of that uh, in a little bit. But the idea that like you started in this world in a very strictly collaborative sense, like you started in a collaboration channel, one of the first of now many. And now you've worked so individually that it feels like you got that collaboration out of your system and now you get to just be yourself with your own thoughts like explaining to people this is linearly and succinctly how i think about the world and things is that purposeful like do you if the idea of like collaboration stuff comes up are you like i much prefer my solitude my own thoughts, which is why I, I link it to the running so much, because I imagine that when you run, you just have this plethora of thoughts to you and yourself. For sure. I mean, I think it was like a natural progression to work to work uh, as a team, but then kind of des- have a strong desire for individuality. I mm-hmm. think that's 
that seems like exactly what happens within any group, whether it be yeah. like a One Direction or a YouTube <laughs> channel, a group of YouTubers <laughs> who can't sing, who are described as a boy band. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Still is the a question. A band of boys. <laughs> yeah, we are a band of boys. Mm -hmm. And actually, now it's a band of boys and one woman yes. and one woman. So <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I can't wait for a reunion at some point because it's going to be like an episode of like Dr. Phil or something. <laughs> It'll be amazing. I feel um, like it's already been a little bit of that. <laughs> basically, at this point. Um, but no, yeah. So it was like a, a just a desire to be an individual and to see who I was as, as myself and as an individual. And mm -hmm. I, I've been fighting with this idea of like, am I me or am I a collection of everyone else around me? Ooh. And you know what I mean? And yes, and, I do know exactly what you mean. And there's this, uh, this like, it, it, there's nothing wrong with that, but I right. do wonder, do I actually like this film or am I just told to like it? do I actually like this type of music or have I just been liking it because of that person? Mm. And there was this realization with many aspects of my life in that way, this, this realization of like, who am I? Who do I actually, what do I actually believe in? And the curiosity that followed, I guess, has been kind of the chaos of the last like five years of my life. I think that's so beautiful. I feel like I'm I connect with that so deeply because I'm also in that a bit of that world of, you know, like you said earlier, when you when you spend years doing this like um, individual content creation where you are the writer, star, producer, marketing team, editor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, it, it can feel very like um, uh, like, oh, my God, look, I can do all these things. But then at the same time, you can step back after years and go, oh, I've, I've become this persona, this something for everyone else, this for external validation that like, who am I if I'm mm -hmm. left alone to my own uh, thoughts, feelings, opinions, etc.? And how do I trust myself to feel what I actually feel? Uh, yeah. And then you add in the layer of like, D of of scrutiny or um, judgment that comes with having certain opinions on the internet. So then right. you're also editing yourself to not say the real thing because you don't want to potentially hurt someone's feelings or potentially hurt like a group of people's feelings. Mm -hmm. Like even I was just filming a podcast today talking about Taylor Swift and I'm yeah. like, I have nothing but good things to say. But I kept thinking, what if I do say something that's a little bit controversial even though it's my real opinion and it's not at all harmful, mm -hmm. but it's taken Yep. As something harmful. I'm like, is that really that bad? Gosh. It's a constant game of oh, how do I care what other people think? Or am I worried about the way other people will interpret what I think? It's mm -hmm. it's chaotic. But also, I wonder for you, like you said, that you are now just sitting down by yourself, kind of talking through your feelings about things like one man therapy in a way for a bunch of people to listen to at the other end of it. Yeah. If that is like just sort of uh, uh, untangling yeah this world in which you live in on youtube for so long where you get so like woven into a, a specific type of person now you're like what if i just start peeling away these threads little by little and see what's there a little bit and like i can see how it's so, like to some people that would be either stressful or even concerning but to me i've decided to look at not even like an unraveling, but like you said, kind of appealing, mm -hmm. appealing of the onion. We're ogres, we have layers. Yes. This is a Shrek reference. <laughs> Shrek was the first animated film to ever win an Oscar. You should know that fact. It's important. This, this kid knows everything. Yeah, I just love <laughs> my great green facts. Um, I, th I think of that as like a fun, exciting journey. And I think yeah. that that is a revelation I've had in, in later on in my life that you know, the confusion and the mess that we find ourselves in can be enjoyable because it's it's normal and it's human and that and it's just going to be a part of life. So you can mm -hmm. either like dread it or have fun with it. And I've decided to have fun with it. Yeah, you okay, a couple of things. You one have this beautiful balance between this deep appreciation and affinity and uh, for aesthetic, for art, for beauty, for small nuanced moments in life that are overlooked but truly deeply beautiful and then you also have this balance of being very cheeky and funny and silly about things and i think that's a great truly a great balance to all of it because it shows i think this 
overall like growth. I think you can get so stuck in being one way or the other or having to be one way or the other that to be able to exist in this like paradox of taking things seriously and also seeing the comedy is very revelatory, I think. And so anyone that's scared of what you're doing, I think they're just not ready to grow up. (laughs) That's what I tell myself when I think about it late at night. I'm like, it's them. It's not me. (laughs) It could never be me. But that's the the crazy thing. And I'm sure you get so many comments and I've seen you respond to some stuff on TikTok, which kills me when you respond so deadpan to people being like uh, idolizing you as what you were versus who you are. I love to. My favorite is the no heart. So if someone says like, are you okay? I go, no. (laughs) <laughs> like it kills me i love i i really embrace that type of response to to public comments because it's hilarious i think it's fantastic but okay uh let's i think maybe this is in line with it the the new book house fires which hmm. if you just google house fires brings up many different results <laughs> or many the little different- girl watching the, the house on fire that's me <laughs> yeah i started to google house fire and then it was just like house fires in your neighborhood and i was like well no 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 that's not necessarily what i need right now um so this is described as and i quote a raw depiction of a young man's emotional warfare with his past the days of wandering through modern times in search of purpose and the electricity flying from tomorrow's potential. Many flowery words. There are lots of adjectives, you know, des- descriptors. Well, it's um, it's a book of poetry and photography, right? And, and short essays, yeah. And short. <laughs> okay, so how did you stumble on this as being your third book? And um, how how has it been now that it's out in the world with people? I think I got I so I've I've, ri- I've written three books. The first one was very much memoir esque, mm-hmm. which people people found funny because you know as a twenty one year old writing a memoir. But I I the more I've let that sit, the more I'm like people who are under twenty one make amazing art all the time. Why is this like a funny concept? Yeah, I was like there are people who have Grammys, Oscars, who were like fifteen years old and they made in in unbelievably empowering music why stifle creativity at a young age mm-hmm. so I've, I've definitely had a little bit of a fuck you to people like that sure. like, stop stop stifling people's creativity um and then from there i went to a little bit more of a creative aspect with note to the note to self where i kind of approached writing a book as as like a, a journal-esque a very open mind a very modern approach to a book. So it's, mm. it's, it's relatively unedited. It's relatively raw. It's not perfect. And it's mm-hmm. intentionally so. Yeah. So I kind of combined both of those two approaches into this new book. And, you know, it's little happenings along the last five years of my life and coincidentally my 20s mm-hmm. and how confusing and turbulent it is to be just like a person in today's overwhelming world. Yeah. But it's it's alleviated with those moments of uh, of I guess like joyful curiosity along mm. the way and and with pretty pictures and and fun and fun uh, poetry. <laughs> but I think that's a beautiful way to not have to give the whole story while also artistically giving the whole story. You know, there is such an essence online of um, a pressure to be completely transparent and to live like a you know a reality show of your whole life all the time and to Mm -hmm. be able to give the poetic essence of the emotions that you felt without having to give the details of what has maybe gone on it's a beautiful way to do it yeah a lot of us uh have figured that like the the ones who started in the beginning and who have continued to to create and you know continue to to stick with it and grow and evolve with it I think have found that way. They found like that's the the way that if you want to survive online, that's how you do it. Is yeah. you you pull back or you find ways to to give, but not to give everything. Mm-hmm. And that's how I found that it's a happy happy balance of like being true to myself and telling the I guess like the kind of the takeaway of the story, but not actually ever telling yeah. every bit of the story or like never telling the names within the story or the real location. So. Sure, like a, like music. Like uh, exactly, yeah. There, um, can I ask how the, you got the title? 
So the title was uh, like a most like most things, or at least for me, I like am fully involved in the full package. Every oh, like, I know the aesthetic of it, start <laughs> to finish, is a Connor Franta joint. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And like the typography took weeks. The the placement of that image took weeks. Mm-hmm. Do we emboss or deboss this? Took weeks. Like all yeah. that was. I'm a nightmare. Um, but you're I'm, an artist. You're an thank artist. You. I care. I care a lot. <laughs> You're a um, night care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the house fires uh, sort of came to me because I had the word house written down as something I wanted to include in the title. And I, it just was like borderline cheesy, certain words going along with it. I didn't want it to be some sort of like going home with me or yeah, yeah. sitting at home. Like It's <laughs> a little bit too mom's wooden kitchen yep. sign. Um, so fire and house together came to me as this idea of like a house is a safe place a fire is a destructive object so throughout your entire life you're kind of having to build these homes and burn them down and build Mm, these homes and mm -hmm. burn them down it's like a a constant growing of identity Mm -hmm. and you're changing as you're going and that could be seen as like devastation or it could be seen as like a brand new opportunity right in front of you oh yeah and it's this beautiful metaphor that is kind of hard to fully understand. No, it's but the to death, me it, death rebirth cycles. They happen to us constantly in so many different levels and aspects of our lives. I am, this is what I think about <laughs> all the time right now. Death, rebirth, everything is death, rebirth. And again, like some people have been like, that seems so sad. I'm like, to me, it seems beautiful and opportunistic. It doesn't yeah. seem, it doesn't have to be sad. Yeah. Like you're thinking about it way too literally. It's not an actual house fire. <laughs> Nobody is dying. You are not losing old photographs and possessions. It's fine. <laughs> but it's also, I mean, you can get so deep into it. and You can also stay like on the surface because you could say, you know, what is our idea of home? Where's our, our idea of identity? Where do we find our safe space? And then as mm-hmm. we grow up, that changes. So you light that house on fire, you move on to something new or the house gets burn down for some capacity in a metaphorical sense and then you yeah. move on and you find a new home somewhere else or like the idea of what you thought your future was going to be which it'll never fully be because you can't actually know what's going to happen mm-hmm. to you along the way you have to constantly like burn down that idea and mm. rebuild the idea as new things happen to you and that's how i feel like my entire life has been it's like i think i understand it or i think i know what's going to happen next year and then something brand new occurs and again it's not doesn't have to be like this painful loss it's right. this new beginning yep ah uh, all right we're going to take a quick break everyone marinate on that for a little bit find your fire extinguishers wherever they might be in your house and <laughs> marinate on that we'll be right back with more not too deep no. Hello listeners, Grace Helbig here, wanting to say two things. A big thank you for listening to the podcast. Uh, If you're a regular listener, if this is your first time listening, welcome and thank you. And uh, second thing, if you are enjoying yourself here in this not too deep world we've built and you'd like to leave us a review, that would be so wonderful. If you can go to the iTunes store, the app store and leave us a lovely little review comment. How are you feeling? Good, bad, otherwise? Maybe just good or otherwise would be appreciated. Other than that, enjoy the podcast. But I will, now that we're back in, Connor, talk to you about the TikTok of all of it. Oh, nice. Hit me with it. What do you think about the TikTok of all of it? Because I only stumbled on a couple weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago, because I don't understand time, uh, to your TikTok. And you're just on there being hilarious. And I was like, oh, my God, this Connor's fucking nailing this. I got to figure this shit out. Thank you. That's sweet Uh, of you. Well, okay. So how do you approach TikTok? Because as someone that's been, you know, like we all have been on all these other platforms for so long and you get this new one and you go into it, you've probably been on there for a while now. What was your, when you were like, I'm going to slide under the radar and just be Connor Franta on TikTok, but not really tell anyone. Exactly. And I think that that's, it was totally unintentional like I was so allergic to it for so long like I just (laughs) I just don't want to do another thing it wasn't even that I didn't like it it was like 
another thing yeah. I have to worry about. Yeah. God, like, and I see how much time put people put into it, you know, uploading like 10 times a day. And I'm like, right. I can't do that. I'll die. Which I just want to give a caveat because some people might hear that and be like, another, you don't have to worry about it. You're all set, whatever. When you worked in social media for a decade and your whole entire job description is to be available and making individual content on these platforms, you have to worry about a new platform <laughs> coming up. It's like if oh. you're the CEO of a business and all of a sudden they start a new franchise in some town, you have to go make sure that that franchise <laughs> represents your business. And like once you start realizing what works, like statistically mm. what works, if you're ignoring it, then it's like, why are you participating in it if you know that there's a better way to do it? Yeah. So me seeing that when TikTok is like, yeah, it definitely works better to upload 10 times a day and just see what hits. I'm like, I don't have the capacity no. to do that. So, but so eventually I just got over it and was using the app just to send TikToks to my friends, like mm. making my own and then yeah. just sending them. And eventually one day I said, oh, this is funny, man, I'll just upload it. And then I got like 4 million views and I'm like, <laughs> oh, so like, oh, the magic's think, not gone from old Franto. Right? I, I did think that. I did think, oh, he still got it. He still got it. <laughs> and then I also thought, oh, it can be that simple. It can be just mm. something that takes me two seconds to make and yeah. is fun and funny. And if I upload it, it does well. That's great. But if I don't, who cares? Yeah. And I was like, oh, it could be just that simple, couldn't it? Yeah. It really could be if I want it to be. <laughs> We're so programmed that everything has to be the best thing we've ever done all the time, constantly. I know. And like, yeah, I've had a few ideas that A, haven't hit or ones that took longer than a couple seconds to make and did hit. But like, I just I try not it's not on my it's not on my calendar. Like YouTube okay. videos are very much something I, I think about schedule in and put effort in and TikToks. Mm -hmm. I like to try not to. <laughs> For fun. And those are probably going to be the ones that do so much better because it's like in the beginning of YouTube when you didn't really care. You were doing it just for fun. That's Weird. how people could tell. And that's why I like it is I'm like, wow, this is so refreshing to see people being relatively like unedited, which probably yeah. isn't the right word for TikTok, but just like unfiltered yeah. and, and weird. I like trying the weird, ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Weird kind of weird humor is nice uh, to have, have back. Oh, my gosh. I know I haven't gotten there yet, but I, I would like to. I'm still in the phase of I don't know how to do this. And I'm putting too much pressure on myself to know exactly how to do this. And I'm not letting myself be as free as they want. Um, <laughs> here's a question. If someone were to direct a movie about your life or let's say some loose essence artistic film loosely mm. based on your life, um, who would you want to direct the movie? And it can't be you. And who would you want to play whatever the loose version of you would be? And oh, it can't gosh. be you. It's tough because I, 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 I love film. Film is one of my many passions. Like I, I see movies every week. I mm -hmm. sit down and watch movies every night if I can. Like I'm always trying to, to digest film because yeah. I, I, I think it informs. I, I think it is the reason why a lot of people say I have a strong aesthetic is because I'm, I'm really conscious of that. Yeah. Um, and like the first person that comes to mind, which is like a recent director I really like is Barry Jenkins. Mm. Um, Barry Jenkins has done a bunch of fantastic uh, fantastic films and he he just captures kind of uh, I don't know like raw human moments in a very a very beautiful way cool. um, you should check check out if Beale Street could talk that's a great film by Barry mm. Jenkins um, and someone who could play me oh god <laughs> it's like do I pick it based upon looks alone or an actor I, I actually like <laughs> Um, I know this is a very entrapment kind of question. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm like the hottest man in the world. He can play me. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Okay, I'll, I'll limit it to this. Uh, Timothy Chalamet, Sh <laughs> Shyamalan, or uh, uh, okay, three options. <laughs> <laughs> Timothy Salamander, uh, Tom Hollandaise, or Ansel uh, Egg, Egg Whites. Ansel Egg Whites, um, Tom Hollandaise, Tim Timothy Chama Timothy Salamander, Shyamalan, Shyamalan. Timothy Charmander. Yeah, exactly. One of those um, three. In terms of like who who's acting I, I think everyone's got like i actually think all of them are great actors yeah. but if i was gonna pick not based upon looks and just based upon acting um tomato <laughs> tomato chalet is definitely in there for me 
<laughs> you heard it here first, y'all. Okay. <laughs> All right, Connor, I think you've answered these questions long in the past, but we're going to hit you with them again. The two questions I, I ask every single guest that is here on the podcast with me. The first is, uh, who, alive or dead, would you most like to throw cold spaghetti at? This one is a very current answer, and I don't know yes. if it's going to stick in the future or whenever this is uploaded, but currently it is November 15th. Yes. And we are post-release of Taylor Swift's Red. Uh, yeah. And I really think the entire internet would would shame me if I didn't say that Jake Gyllenhaal deserves cold, cold spaghetti thrown at his face. You would today. be shocked to hear that we've had that answer today as well. <laughs> well, no, hey, but it it's, means it's great to hear that you have guests with taste. Um. Well, that kind of, I mean... Thoughts on without being too thoughtful. Who knows if you talked about this in your personal podcast already? Uh, <laughs> in line with the way we were talking about earlier that you you handle you know like your life story without being specific to people, places, things. Her doing something like that with being loosely uh, overt about what the narrative is. Uh, what was your take on on seeing that short film? I'm curious. So the way I approached it in my podcast is a way that I won't approach it here. I'll be a little bit more like I I was conflicted because initially I saw it and I'm like, poor guy, 10 years later, and he's getting all this like to all these tomatoes thrown at his face. Yeah. But then I thought like circumstantially, the uh, it's not like she's re-releasing the album to give him the middle finger. She's re-releasing it for for the reason of, you know, she she had to to get her artistic license back. Sure. And that was already the most successful song on the album. So like coincidentally, she's going to yeah. probably make a music video. So it's almost disingenuous for her to make something completely different relating right. to it. So I get it. And I it's just like think it was the fan favorite that they asked for. So it's like she's exactly. giving the fans what they want, but she can't deny that this is what the story was. And they will find Kinda. every Easter egg and every single little thing. So if it's not true to the original idea, I think people will be like, what's going on? Do what I really hope. I really hope. And this is this. This is a lesson for anybody who's ever in any sort of situation where they are on like the, the Jake Gyllenhaal side of it. Mm -hmm. If he reacts in a in a positive, like if he makes a short film himself giving the scarf back to Taylor Swift, genius. Ooh, wow. Genius. Or even just a TikTok. <laughs> yes. Honestly, of him like having a red scarf sobbing and like extending oh. the olive branch would be amazing and the if best way to respond to this. All you'd have to do, honestly, would make make a new Tumblr that's just a picture of him giving the scarf back. That's her sweet spot, freaking yes. Tumblr. <laughs> yes. it would Iconic. Be like, it would be genius. It would do so well. And maybe people wouldn't necessarily forgive him, but it does alleviate like because he could he could just choose to either have a negative response or never respond, which mm -hmm. probably isn't the best response yeah i think he should he should pull a ryan reynolds to do a hilarious <laughs> commercial nobody asked for go. there we go you heard go. it go. <laughs> okay the other question i ask every single guest on the podcast is to tell us your worst pants shitting story or bathroom emergency mm -hmm. but you can only use three words or three small phrases to describe the event. And as someone that runs constantly, I know you've got the runs constantly. So mine, which hasn't been updated, but absolutely should, should. Uh, is college jogging front lawn. So I'm curious what story might come to mind for you that you can describe in three words or three small phrases. Since I've last <laughs> been asked this question, uh -huh. which has been years, so you don't know when this happened, but it's, no. it's, I, I've definitely remembered. I've remembered more. <laughs> I've been running my entire life. I'm but a but a man of 29. So there are many opportunities for for opportunity. Oh. There are many opportunities for opportunities. Um, <laughs> so how can I describe the one that I remembered and almost wanted to die just thinking about it? Because it was so oh bad. no, oh no, oh no. Okay, okay. Um, let's say. <laughs> expired, You're a poet. Ex, you... Expired, expired cheese. Oh God! Okay. Uh, <laughs> jet lag. <laughs> City jog. <laughs> Did you know the cheese was expired before or after? Of course not. That's a stupid fucking question. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea until. 
it was too late. Oh, isn't that always the case? I hope your next book is called Expired Cheese. <laughs> expired, expired dairy products. <laughs> it, um, we'll, we'll talk uh, offline. It was traumatizing. Yeah, I, I don't want to ask any follow-up questions. I'll let everyone paint their own pictures. Uh, I'm a person. Everyone's people. Uh, we're all dealing, doing the best we can. Mm. Okay, now we have a section of the podcast called Deep and Hot, where I ask you a deep question that we have prepared for you and for a hot take on like kind of like a topic that we have prepared for you. Has anyone ever told you this section reminds them of a casserole? A casserole? Like no. a Midwestern ca- deep and hot. I was going to say only someone from, were you from Minnesota? Minnesota. Would say- <laughs> Wait, as soon as you said deep and hot, one, I thought of explicit content. And then two, yes. I was like, that reminds me of Thanksgiving and a casserole. So tis the season, tis the season. I'm, pl- I'm planning <laughs> at the moment, so it's all that's on my mind. Continue, go on. Okay, here's your <laughs> deep question that we have prepared for you. <clears throat> what, in your opinion, is the goal of love? Mm. And this, this could was... be all wow. different. It's a deep question. It's a deep question. Hmm. And this can be yeah. any type of love. This can be platonic love. True. This can be a romantic love. This can be love for nature, for your prof- for art, for whatever it might be. I feel like platonic and romantic love, you know, true authentic love, the goal of it is just to to never censor your your true self in every mm. way. So to never, never feel like you have to hold back on something you would say because Mm. there is, you know, there is no judgment or there is no, um, it's not even that there is no judgment. It's just, there's no fear of what the judgment will do to you in any way versus sometimes you won't say something because you're like, oh, is that too far? But with someone that you love, you know that like, even if it's too far, they know you enough to know that like you didn't mean it. You meant it a certain right. way. Right. It's that unconditional kind of love. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And I think that that is both what I look for in friendships and in romantic partners. Yeah, because that's the kind of love and and appreciated space that gives you a chance to grow into more of your true self when you can already start to plant the seed of your true self around people <laughs> that are just going to help you grow. <laughs> Only be yourself when you're very comfortable, like a year in, <laughs> then you reveal who you really are. And you're like, I've been hiding this whole time. <laughs> That's my joke always is that like, ha ha, the mask is off. <laughs> I, I pranked you. you. This is who I really am. Deal with it. <laughs> if you believe in marriage, it's as soon as you say I do, then you say, ha, I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Here's Johnny. Oh, okay. Hot take now. You've kind mm. of touched on this already. Um, but your hot take on evolving as an artist, which I think is something you've been doing really thoughtfully, um, whether you are, you know, conscious or, or meticulously trying to do it or not. Um, I think people, we like talked about this earlier, you can get stuck in your persona or this idea or this brand of yourself. Um, do you make a conscious effort to evolve as an artist or is it something that's just kind of naturally happened the more you try to be true to yourself? It's a, it's a combination of the two. Um, there's mm-hmm. definitely, um, as you know, as a Virgo, uh, I, I really do love planning. My, yeah, my I notes like, are, uh, proud Virgo. <laughs> I am a proud Virgo. I am, uh, it's me, Jenna Marbles and co. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, so I definitely, there is, you know, an undeniable strategy to anything from how I do the dishes to how I upload a YouTube video. Gotcha. <laughs> but I do think that there is this underlying um, process that we go through of just like changing without realizing it or adapting without realizing it. Mm. And I I wish that that was always met with, with like the change that people go through was always met with like warmth and kindness versus mm-hmm. saying you've changed as if it's a bad thing or yeah. you're different. You're, it seems like you're, you're different right now versus that should be like, Oh, look, they're, they're, they're thinking, they're mm-hmm. conscious, yeah. they're a person who's trying to do something different versus just constantly existing as the same. Yeah. I, with that, I'm curious, um, you know, that House Fires is out in the world, what the reaction has been from people that have either followed you for years or they're new to, to you and your art. What's that been like? It's been great. I think that what's nice um, 
is that like I, w- I was able to do a little bit of a tour. So I had like a little bit of some meet and greets, masks, yeah. all that kind of stuff. And that was nice just because one, I don't do that often, let right. alone have I done anything like that in the last two years. Yeah. Um, so it was just nice to see firsthand like the growth of my of people that have watched me in a way and yeah. people that would show up and they would tell me their stories. I used to watch you when I was 15. Now I'm uh, you know in medical school. And to me, it just it, uh, the most people have just been saying they appreciate how vulnerable the work is or how mm. how open I am in the work. And yeah. that was the goal. Honestly, I went into it saying like, don't hold back on like what you really feel. Mm-hmm. I definitely you know held back on like certain details like we talked about, but I didn't yeah. hold back on how I actually feel about things. Yeah. That's huge. And then they put it out there and let people read it. It's literally like letting them read your diary. It's wild. A bit. And it's so weird with, with literature for it to be, you know, it's, it, you can't change it really. Yeah, you could, if you there's a go, reprinting, <laughs> there is, but. You can't go edit your Instagram description and change it out if it was a little too much for people I, to handle. A little too spicy, <laughs> you know, yeah. there's a little too much chili in there. I know. And I, I think like, I love the idea of like, it it being in a library and like the world is on fire, but it still is like, it's like the ash of the book still exists. And it's like 200 years later. And I'm like, it's still there. A copy of house fires is in a house fire. Have, uh, did your family read it? Did you have like a core group of people read it first before you send it out into the, the real world? I get really nervous sharing anything like that with anybody. So not many yeah. people read it ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Um, I let a lot of people read very specific chapters and things. And, yeah. you know, it was a lot of uh, a lot of love around that. But my mom was on a road trip the other week and my mom calls me and she goes, oh, good timing. Um, <laughs> we just finished listening to your audiobook, <laughs> and and I And I said, I mean this in the nicest way. I can't talk to you right now. Now that you've informed me of that, I actually need to hang up this phone. I don't that you gross weird um talk to you later i love you i appreciate you bye (laughs) i love you i need to establish some boundaries really quickly uh, but i love you thank you so much (laughs) i was like you can do that just don't tell me about it please yeah oh god yeah it was a lot it was a lot to take in have you talked since have we uh no we'll never talk to you again actually (laughs) i don't have a mother (laughs) i burned that bridge um <laughs> in this house fire i committed arson i literally lit their house on fire they aren't living there anymore uh it sounds like it's going well i mean anything that is that personal and that emotional and that artistic is always going to have a bit of um yeah a lot to process after all of it it's nice it's freeing again it's 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 a different it's a different way of approaching things like that it could be terrifying and it could be mm-hmm. uncomfortable or you could be you know there's there's no reason to fear the truth because it is what it is. There's no reason to run away from it because it will always be your truth in that Ooh. moment. Even if it changes later on, it's like, that was what I felt then. Mm-hmm. I can't, I can't lie. That mm. is how I felt. So what's there to be afraid of? Well, that's another thing to be tofu and marinate on for a little bit. We're going to take one last break. Uh, When we get back, uh, we have a question sent to us that you and I can work together to give some very unprofessional advice because you've already given so much. Uh, We'll be right back with more Not Too Deep. Uh, okay, Connor, we have a question sent in to us that you and I can give some professional and professional advice on. Um, this is about friendship. Mm. Um, someone is writing in saying, how do I get over a friend breakup? Not how to become friends again, just how to get over the breakup of it, mm. which I think is a very interesting and First of all, the fact that you're writing about knowing that it's not like a we're going to get back together, but that this is maybe the end for now. Who knows? Mm -hmm. He's already a step into accepting it in some capacity. Um, But I'm curious your thoughts, Connor, if you have any. I yeah, it's it's tough because, of course, I don't know how long you were friends with this person or like how it, how it ended. Cause that's definitely important, but yeah, I don't, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a sad realization the older you get, but you do go through friend breakups or friend losses 
mm-hmm. a, like semi frequently of just like a person yeah. who's in your life for a moment and then they're gone the next. But that's just just how it was or how it was meant to be. So you kind yeah. of, you know, you just kind of have to look at it as like it's a natural way of life and it happens to everyone. And you can be sad that it's you can be sad that it's over, but just happy that it happened. Yeah, I also think there's some sort of peace that can be have for you that it's if like you're realizing, oh, this relationship I have with this person isn't going to continue. It can be rationalized that like I can't give this person what they want the same way I don't I'm not getting what I want from this person. And to, you know, reconcile with that in some capacity is really liberating and freeing and mature, but also very difficult at the same time. But realizing like if you're giving more than you're getting or if that person is doing the flip flop of it, like I think that's what adulthood is, is realizing the ratios on energy (laughs) give and take. It really is, isn't it? Oh, my God. Well, you you have a bit uh, you just did a bit about like information about your 20s because you are almost uh, how far are we out from 30? (sighs) What what is it? November too much. So I'm I'm one sixth the way through this this through 29. (laughs) Okay, so in your 29th year, Mm -hmm. any um, incredibly profound thoughts or incredibly simplified thoughts that have had a profound effect on you. Um, it kind of was like the aftermath of how that video really resonated with people. I was, I was yeah. shocked at how many, it was just like a lot of, like a lot of comments and a lot of like lengthy comments too, like full on stories of people at different positions in their twenties. Um, and it, it, it's just, I wish that often in my twenties, I just didn't take things as seriously as they were. I made a video mm-hmm. about that last week of just it's not it's not that things aren't serious, but I wish I didn't make it seem like everything was the end of the world always or yeah. that I let things get me in such an emotional rut sometimes. And mm-hmm. I feel like that happened a lot during my 20s. <laughs> and then if you asked me about what was that, if you were like, oh, yeah, that one time you were really sad, like two months ago, I'd be like, yeah, I don't even remember what it was about <laughs> because it didn't really matter. It just seemed like it was the end of the world. So there's yeah. so many things that I'm like, just like chill. Just chill if you can. (laughs) This is why I think, like we said earlier, that you being able to have a sense of humor along with your sensitivity is extremely important and a quintessential balance for any artist, any person that's putting themselves out there publicly. Like you have to be able to find the humor in the things that seem incredibly debilitating and devastating. I mean, to a degree, depending on what the specifics are. But, you know, the things that you think is going to crash your world in, sometimes you can uh, find something. Something. Oh, for sure. I mean, like some of the times where like something devastating happened to me, I I either break down or I break out in laughter because it's so comical. Like there was one day I had where um, someone tried to break into my house. I got in a car accident. And I was supposed to get a tattoo the same day. And I was <laughs> laughing at how hilarious that entire cycle was of me being like, someone tried to break into my house. Oh my God, I'll get over it. It's fine. And then I get into a car accident on the way to get a permanent tattoo <laughs> on my body. And I thought, I am not remembering this day. The idea that I would get something permanently on my body. And every time I looked at it, I would think like, break in, break in <sighs> and car accident. And like all of it was just so funny to me at the very end of it. But it could have been debilitating if I would have allowed it to be. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever get the tattoo? <laughs> um, no, sadly I didn't. I I mean I <laughs> got the best. <laughs> I got I got more tattoos, but I didn't get that specific one, sadly. But okay, okay. That was the universe really trying to tell you not to get that tattoo, I think. <laughs> That's kind of what I said because I could have kept driving. The vehicle didn't need to like be fixed that bad. I could have kept yeah. driving, but I said mm-mm. Mm. I um no thank you. Mm-mm. I don't need that. On me right I don't now. know if this emotional roller coaster is the ride I should be on to put something permanent on my body right now. Definitely, exactly. And it's like that could have sent me into a spiral, but I just in that moment I was like, this is comically horrible. Oh comically yeah, well you horrible. can zoom out a little bit on all of it. Um, Connor, we're getting to the end of the podcast. I can't mm-hmm. thank you enough. 
what is on the horizons for you? I know you just had this book come out that will still be, you know, in your ether promoting and, and making sure people have in their hands and their brains and mothers have it in their audio book files. <laughs> you can listen to it, but don't tell me. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's yeah, it's a lot of, as you know, it's like working on these long form projects. You spend so much time working on it that when it's actually out, you're like, oh, yeah, the journey kind of begins now. So it's a lot yeah. of a lot of promotion of it, a lot of, you know, reminding people they can, they can have it on any type of, uh, they can have it in physical form. They can have it on mm-hmm. a Kindle, an iPad. They can listen to the audiobook that take, took me a week to record all of that. But beyond that, it's just, you know, it's just kind of like living and creating, making YouTube videos, making nice. TikToks when I feel about it. I have a photo shoot for a, a magazine next week that I'm photographing <laughs> and a commercial that I'm in the week after that. So it's just like fun I, there, just, I, I know. love life. We <laughs> haven't. Know. I mean, we haven't even touched on the idea that you're a professional photographer on top of all of this, which blows my freaking brains. But it's so it's, fun. <laughs> but that's your staying true to the little flame of art inside of you and going wherever the candle like uh, blows. Like you're like a candle in the wind, some might say. <laughs> a candle in the wind. <laughs> uh, Connor, for making time for us, we like to give a token of our appreciation for all of our guests. Um, and that is a personalized horoscope from us to you that Melissa has put in the chat for you if you'd Ooh. like to read it aloud okay. for all of us. <laughs> Dear Virgo, mm. maiden of the stars. Ooh. <laughs> Your sign may bring about a stubbornness in you that you already know the right answer to a problem. However, there's power in learning both sides of a situation rather than opposing fights. So from now on, let's say you play for both teams. Wait, don't take the r- that the wrong way. <laughs> Yeah, the stars are silly, silly gooses. Yep. Well, both teams, I mean, you never know. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Connor, where can people get the book if they don't already have it? Where can they listen to your um, new ish podcasts? Where can they follow you on TikTok? All of the things. Um, well, I've just changed all my usernames to at Maiden of the Stars. So you can go follow me across <laughs> all socials. Um, no, you've always at Connor Franta on all socials. Got them on lockdown. Uh, connorfrantabooks.com for my book anywhere in the world you can get it there's tons of signed copies in India and Australia so you can get it kind of cool. anywhere and wait are you still yeah. doing common culture right now uh, there, we're on a little bit of a hiatus but there okay. will be more coming soon great yes. I love the crypticness of it oh, of course there always is always plans um, congratulations and thank you so much for talking to us about all this uh, follow this beautiful budding artist hilarious human being wherever he is and whatever he's doing I'm obsessed thank you again Connor and we'll see uh, you guys next time on another episode of Not Too Deep goodbye too deep, too deep, too deep, not too deep with Grace Helbig. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer Melissa D. Montz, edited by Shireen Lani Yunus, post-production sound by Chris Henry, and an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. Music